Hey guys, guys, it's James and Yasmin. And as you can probably already tell by the title and thumbnail, this is the video where we explain why we decided to leave the professional classical ballet world. Well, first of all, we want to say we absolutely love ballet. We love classical ballet. We love the technique. We love to dance it. We love to involve it in our own choreography. We love the challenge. We love the discipline. We love the skill set that we have been able to acquire from being in that world. I mean, I've started dancing ballet professionally when I was pretty much, I think, eight years old, yep. and you've been doing it for the last five years. So yep. we've been in this industry, in this world, for a really, really long time, and there's just a lot of things we disagree with, and a lot of things that don't work out for us. Obviously, it works out for so many people, but it just didn't for us. For the life we want to live, it just, it didn't align, and we felt like we had to part ways. So let's get into some of the reasons as to why we left. So let's talk about COVID-19. So when we went into our second lockdown, we had no possibility to train. We had to train in our one room apartment. We were in two different classes, headphones, laptops, no space, no room. Hmm. And I think not just us, but almost everyone in our school lost complete motivation. Yep. It's also kind of scary to think, what am I as a dancer without an audience? 100%. A dancer without an audience is nothing. You dance to entertain people. Obviously, you dance because you love it, but you do it because you entertain someone. So we had a thought like, how do we build an audience that is always with us? Which is you guys now. So we decided to use this time in lockdown to post, share, comment, live stream, and ultimately work out not only how to kind of grow this community, but how to make a living as a dancer online. Now, in terms of COVID, there is a little bit more to COVID and why we decided to leave the ballet world, but you've got to stay tuned for that. And the next thing is our passion for creating. I mean, we've both been posting videos online forever, even before we met. You had your own social media. Mm -hmm. I had my own social media. Like, what do you think? Like, I mean, just... I totally agree. And the thing is, it's this dream that you always have, well, at least for us, yeah. that we always had in the back of our head. Like, yeah. oh, imagine being a YouTuber or imagine, you know, being big on social media or imagine being able to be our own boss. And yeah, it is this idea that I don't think either of us could quite grasp in that time of our lives. But now that we're in it and we're living it and we're doing it, it, it kind of makes us realize that you always should follow your dreams as cliche as that sounds. How happy we are now is just incredible. It's like tenfold. I've never felt this happy. I always thought ballet made me the happiest person on planet Earth, but it actually didn't. There's a much happier Yasmin and I think there can be even uh, even happier as me later 100%. on in life. I'm just so happy we made this decision and we can live our true passion now. Now, speaking of passion, we both have always had a dream to be top tier choreographers. And I mean, at least for me, I always had this kind of idea in my head that, oh, you know, when I'm hired and I'm standing in front of a big company and they kind of go, oh, you know, what does this guy do? Oh, you know, well, I used to dance at the Marinsky and I danced at the Paris Opera Ballet and I danced at Birmingham and or I danced with the Royal. It was, I realized now in retrospect, I wanted to live the company life just so I could say I've lived the company life. Yeah. Now, that's not true passion. Mm -hmm. That doesn't, that proves in itself that I have more of a goal to create than necessarily to do, yeah. right? And everyone's different. I have friends that absolutely go to bed at night and dream of doing Nutcracker. Dream of doing Swan Lake, dream of doing Giselle, and that's great. And if we had those dreams, we would still be at that professional school. Exactly. But the fact is, we have different goals and different aspirations. And what about the story with Philip Shapiva and the NDT? Tell yeah, hundred percent. So that that's a perfect example. This one guy, I've been following him for a very, very long time. His name's Philip Shapiva. Big fan. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he is. Uh, well, I don't want to get the facts incorrect, but from what I can tell, he's a very creative guy, uh, phenomenal dancer, little phenomenal bit of a little bit of a philosopher, but has essentially built his name and built his career on social media or with the use of social media. And I saw one day that, oh wow, Philip is choreographing for NDT. Now, if you don't know what NDT is, in the world that we came from, it's the cream of the crop. Right. Everyone wants to dance for NDT. It is, you know, Netherlands Dance Theatre. That beautiful dancers, beautiful company. Oh. So hard to get in. Phenomenal, phenomenal company. And he choreographed for NDT. Not once, I think actually twice. And I was like, in my head, I was like, are you kidding me? And this was the moment where I really realized that we live in a different world. 
and we can still live these dreams and do them in an unconventional way. I mean, basically our social media is just a portfolio. A hundred percent. It's just a portfolio of what we're doing. It's like sending a CV to someone, you know, where it says all the things you've done. We just have it on our social media. Exactly. And I think also the world we're going into, a lot of people check your social media nowadays. It doesn't matter what job you're going into, they'll always check your social media. And yeah, we just use our social media as a social media as a portfolio. A perfect example, I just thought of a kind of a good analogy for this is there are lots of creators now that are being flown to New York Fashion Week, Paris Fashion Week. They didn't grow up as models. They didn't grow up in the model industry. Yeah. There are top influencers getting casted for Netflix films. And don't get me wrong, they need to have a skill set. Exactly. That definitely matters. But by having that following and by having that community definitely helps as well. I mean, look at Philip. Not only is he a really, really creative guy that offered a lot for Netherlands Dance Theatre, he can sell tickets because he has this following. So I think this thought also really helped us make our decision that, oh, you know what? We don't have to go into a ballet company for 12 years and be a tree for six years just to get to a soloist and yeah. just to, you know, kind of go on and do bigger and better things. You know, we can do it our own way. Exactly. Now we're getting a little bit into a controversial topic. We believe ballet has to evolve. Um, the last time I watched a ballet, I'm pretty sure the couple rows that were filled were filled with people with gray hair, which is a scary <laughs> thought because who's gonna watch me dance on stage? Yeah. Who's gonna watch the younger generations it's dance on stage? It's definitely an older demographic. Exactly, and to be able to get the younger demographic to watch, you need to be out there. It's not mm. like back in the days where only the higher hierarchies could could watch ballet. It was unaccessible. Only a couple people could watch. But that's not the time we live in anymore. You have no. to make things accessible. You need to make things trending. You mm. need to make things... Yeah, you have to evolve. Everyone has to evolve. And I think the ballet world is just struggling with that. They're stuck in their ways. They don't want to share, if that makes sense. You know, it's not every day that you're scrolling through your feed and you see you know, some really cool ballet to some new school music. It's just really old school. And don't get me wrong, the classics, it's timeless. That's always gonna, you know, be I mean, a beautiful thing. Even but one thing like, I, for example, would I would film a choreography of myself, a ballet. Um, I mean, this is also, any dance style has to evolve. It's not just ballet, actually. But I was filming a classical variation and I asked, can I post this on my Instagram? And they were like, no, you can't, it's copyright. I'm like, are you crazy? Like, that guy who made this choreography isn't even alive anymore and I'm not allowed to share it with anyone. Exactly. And to be fair, also, another thing is, you want more and more people to do ballet. So mm. how do I get little kids to be obsessed and love ballet if they can't see it? 100%. This is one thing that drives me absolutely bonkers because I am obsessed with marketing. I'm obsessed with... Uh, numbers, analytics, all those types of things. And I just think to myself, you know, if I was a director of a ballet company, right? And I, I would immediately go, okay, cool. We will still do our normal live shows because live is the piece of resistance. That's what we all want. Look you at know. artists. Exactly. They still, because they put out an album and because they post on social media and do all that stuff, they still go on tour. Yeah. People still buy tickets. It doesn't just mean you don't some, do exactly. live things. Just because someone puts something on social media doesn't mean people don't want to see it live anymore. Live is amazing. It's so much more beautiful than online and we totally agree with that. 100%. And yeah, so I would say, cool, we do the normal live shows, but every, let's say, Thursday, we're going to post a... 13 minute ballet clip, especially for our YouTube channel, right? Yeah. So then imagine, let's picture it. Let's say I'm my younger self, I'm an eight year old boy and I live in Canberra, Australia. And I stumble across Royal Ballet's YouTube channel where they post every Thursday a 13 minute awesomeness. Dance, whatever or it is. A bar or a training or tips yeah. or tutorial, whatever. Anything, right? And I watched this for a long, long time, a long, long time, eight up until the age of 18, let's say. Yeah. And I'm subscribed. And then one day they post touring in Canberra, Australia. I go, no way. I've been watching these guys since I was eight. I am definitely buying a ticket. Exactly. It's different. Now what happens is there's not that connection. There's no reason for me to want to go buy that ticket or go see that thing because I haven't built a, a rapport. I haven't built a relationship with that company. And I think 
don't get me wrong, there are companies now that are starting to evolve and do this. That. There are yeah. some young directors with some really, you know, modern outlooks on life, but I think so many companies and businesses and just in general need to really take advantage of social media because there are a lot of eyeballs out there and what is ballet? It's exactly. a performing art. Yeah. It's a performing art. Guess what? You can perform to so many people every day, but a lot of them, not all, are choosing to say no. Yeah. And I think this leads perfectly into our next point. Exactly. How judgmental the ballet world is. I started posting ballet content and videos on social media way before mm. I met James. Like literally, like mm -hmm. it was still called, TikTok was still called Music Kelly when I posted yeah. ballet videos. And again, I posted ballet videos. Mm -hmm. I tried to make some trends a little bit more balletic and all that type of stuff. But the second I went into school, I was just the TikTok girl. Everyone's making a joke. And not just the kids, the teachers as well. Mainly which the teachers. Was the worst part about it. Because I feel like when kids make jokes about it, it's still it hurts. But when a teacher that you look up to mm. makes really rude and. Um, like, oh, Yasmin, why don't you just smile like the way you smile in your, your TikToks? TikToks. Like, it's so like demeaning. That is so demeaning. Or for example, we had this one teacher. She came into class, told us how freaking fake social media is and blah, blah, blah. Obviously, the second the word social media comes out of someone's everyone mouth, goes. everyone looks at me, which is <laughs> the feeling. I just kind of... I've experienced that as well. It's just, I don't know. I just want to, I would just want to sink in the floor. <laughs> Not that I'm embarrassed on, on what I'm doing, but if you don't get any, if you don't have anyone around you that supports what yeah. you're doing, it's really, really difficult. Yep. And again, I look up to my teachers. I look up to all these people. I want to be like them. And when then when they say things like that, it really hurts. Mm -hmm. So she comes in and she tells us how fake social media is. And then she goes, you know, girls, how about you just all post a photo of you guys without makeup and with a funny face? And I just thought in my head, <laughs> would you ever go on stage without makeup? No, they wear no. their tiara, the no. tutu. You wear your prettiest tutu, yep. your prettiest tiara, the best makeup you have. You gotta make your eyes look bigger. Mm -hmm. You gotta mm -hmm. make your, you know, your cheekbones nice and all that. Is that fake? You're no. always gonna present yourself from your best side. You're performing. I perform and I present myself on social media. Why should I present myself from my not better side? And it doesn't mean you can't be real on social media, yeah. especially now at the at this point. We're trying to be so real on social yeah. media, but let's not get too deep into Well, that. actually, I have one more point similar to that, and I actually had a teacher look at me, and this is when I just hit 10,000 followers on Instagram, and there were like 10,000 people. Do you know all those people? And again, it's the thing where like, I'm a confident guy, but I felt really intimidated in that moment, and now I look back on it, I'm like, well, do you know all the people that are in the auditorium when you're being a prima ballerina? Exactly. This logic that these teachers make up and that these people make up makes absolutely no, no sense. sense. Like literally, they're so stuck in their ways that yep. they cannot accept and they try anything possible to make the person that tries to do something different feel little. Like I literally felt belittled every single day. Every single day yep. in my class, I felt belittled and that felt horrible and obviously made me... Obviously, it made me kind of start hating ballet. Mm. Not hate ballet, but the world, the world and my yep. surroundings. No, totally. I had moments where it was literally every single day. Like, I would get a move wrong and the teacher would be like, well, maybe if you weren't spending all your weekends making those dance videos, you would actually get the move. And I'm just like, it, it, it would annoy me even more because we are so dedicated to what we do and we aren't just the type of people that just kind of cruise through life. Like, I don't want to get too deep into this because we want to make another video on our dance journey, yeah. but I had a solid six months at one point in my life where I got up at 4.30 every single morning. You know, I was so dedicated to the art form. It's, I lived and breathed ballet. Also, he started really late and he got so talented in such a short time. Like he improved so quick. And this is because we're both really hard workers. Like we were both doing so well and we would have done really well in the ballet world as well. And the funny thing is, sorry to cut yeah. you off, but I actually had my original teachers come to me and tell me to stop doing social media. Like, like they genuinely deleted. said like, you should stop doing social media. It's soaking up your time, da 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 uh, Yep, really just stop. Now, the thing is, I 
respected them and I really wanted to, you know, get the most corrections out of my class. I wanted to impress them. I wanted to get the most out of everything. So I did that. And funnily enough, <laughs> lots of people have to go on a social media detox to maybe rid themselves of a, a feeling of being depressed. But I actually fell into a little bit of a depression in that time when I stopped social media. Purely the fact that it was my outlet. That was my creative outlet. I loved ballet and I gave everything to it. But I also liked meeting up with my friends on a weekend, making some dance videos and creating a short film and putting things out there. So I stopped social media for, well, it sort until of spread we, until we met. Yeah. And then I met Yasmin and I was like, yeah, I haven't posted in like over a year. I've and got 10,000 followers. I had this phase where it started to get really bad in school that I kind of, I don't know, stopped posting like not completely like every now and then but even when i posted i had anxiety anxiety to click post because i was like what does that person think what is this teacher gonna say tomorrow in class when i posted i was that kid gonna look at me because i just posted and that is so much stress and anxiety we both went through that we now don't have anymore and it feels so good we can just do what we want and what we're proud of so one big issue that we both really faced with this whole situation is not to throw people under the bus, but a lot of our peers, uh, let's say colleagues, a lot of our colleagues would go to a party, get drunk, smoke, do drugs, watch Netflix all night, watch Netflix all night, scroll on TikTok endlessly, and we would decide to go home and create things. And but not just create things, create dance videos because we, <laughs> we are dancers. dancers but no we are the ones that in class in front of everyone being told yeah you guys you're not good enough or you guys don't get this correction or you guys can't do a forte because you're doing dance videos yeah. on the weekend and you're free we time. were the ones being demonized for what we were doing yet the funny thing is we were just bringing more exposure to that world and i'd also like to point out i don't want to talk for me right now but just i want to talk about yasmin she is the most phenomenal ballet dancer you've seen ever. She's top of her class. She always aced everything. She always got the top marks. You know, when, like, actually, when you would walk into our school, there was, there's literally photos all over the school of Yasmin. She was the poster girl of this school. And obviously, we're not saying the names of the schools that we went to, but, you know, she was the poster girl. She was the everything, yet... Oh, what happens? Now Yasmin says, actually, you know what? I want to do my own thing. Oh, now everyone's attitudes change. Oh, Yasmin, you should stay. James, you should stay. You guys are so talented. We want you in the school. And the problem is when you're treated badly, exactly. time and time again, people get fed up. And speaking of being fed up, I also had a really hard time with some injuries. Mm. Um, I'm pretty sure we've just started dating. And it was my second bachelor year. Mm -hmm. um, so my second like study year. And it was the first day of school. And we went to the school together. And I lifted my bag. And I felt a really, really bad pain in my back. Like a mm. stinging, sharp pain in my back. Really bad. And I'm really resilient. Like I have to say, I'm a really I'm resilient. I'm more injury prone. Like I'm, I'm the really, complainer. Yeah. And I mean, all ballet dancers are pretty resilient. Especially and girls, point shoes. Exactly. Oh my <laughs> god, I don't miss those. <laughs> <laughs> Side point. <laughs> they look beautiful. I had this really sharp pain in my back, so we got to school, first class, I said, I've done something to my back, I cannot do this class. And they were already like, mm, maybe just try, it can't be that bad, blah blah blah. I was like, I cannot do class. So I went to physiotherapy. Um, obviously, they couldn't really tell what I had, so they were like, it's probably just muscle, you probably just have to rest a little bit, it should be anything bad. Went to ballet class, told my ballet teacher, she thought it was a joke, um, she didn't take it serious, so I pursued to do class. Also, just one thing I'd like to add in, there's a lot of pressure in the ballet world, yeah. in the sense that it's not like, they're just like, oh yeah, cool, just take a seat, you know, see what the goal is, or take a doctor, it's no, it's a very old school mentality, it's yeah. just like the movies. Everyone, yeah, everyone's scared to say when they're hurt, everyone's scared to say when they don't like something, everyone's scared to just say anything. Just don't say anything and you'll make it in the ballet world, basically. Yeah, which um, we don't have that personality. Not That's, at all. Yeah. I mean, I've been mm. all the time, uh, but this time, and also I can, I, I know my body. 
really well. Like mm. I can sense, oh, this is just something small. I can yes. keep going. Or mm, this is something really bad. Or I've never felt this before. This feels completely wrong. My back felt completely wrong. I knew something was wrong. Something happened when I lifted that bag. I had like half a year of sitting out, doing class, sitting out. I also went to the doctor, but they sadly didn't find anything. And they said it was just muscle, which that also really sucked for me because basically I told her how in pain I was for such a long time, mm. but no one believed me. And that's just, yeah. Then another problem is because I do social media, obviously they were like, it's not from the bag. It's because you film dance videos outside on concrete, you know, things like that. That's also another thing that we never said. Eight months went by like half a year, longer than half a year. And I was still in so much pain, like so much pain. Like it was insane. And as well, I was scared to film videos because every time I would post, I would think, oh my God, now they think I am fine. But I'm, mm. I was just doing, on social media, I was doing things that were okay for me, for my yes. back that didn't hurt. But in ballet class, I had to do the whole class, everything, the, the whole tra with a really painful back and no one understood my situation. I'd also like to say, just from a side note, I was there the day Yasmin picked up this bag, right? I literally saw her pick up this bag and go, ooh, after eight months of them not believing me, them telling me it didn't happen when I lifted the bag, basically uh, calling me a liar, actually going up to my boyfriend, asking him, hey, did that bag thing really happen? Mm. James goes, yes, I saw it. And then going to James's face, no, we don't believe you. I think it happened because of social media. Well, actually, I had a teacher say to my face, that's bull. So exactly. that shows so the attitude of the teachers and what they... So yeah, I had eight months of that trauma, which really like, I was really unwell. So I went to the doctor again, right after my exams, because I pushed through my exams because I had no choice. And surprise, I was actually severely injured and I had a slip disc. Hmm. Hmm. So I walk into school and I go, here you are. I finally have a piece of paper. What is wrong with me? The reason why the first doctor didn't see in the first picture that they got from my back, it was just a slight slipped it was just slightly slipped out so they couldn't really tell obviously i don't know maybe they could have seen for it. people that don't know it's a spinal injury yeah. and it is quite common but usually in people a lot older and uh yeah, in the ballet it's... world it's really bad because mm. in, in normal life it's not not that much of a problem um, a lot of people have slip discs and they don't even know you yeah, know? exactly. Because it didn't hurt in my daily life, it only hurt in ballet. And that's another thing that they couldn't understand. On the side, I was teaching Yasmin hip hop. So we were doing like the hip hop trends where there's not a lot of back movement. Exactly. Whereas, so the teachers would see that and go, well, why is she dancing? But she would go to school and have to do a combre where you literally, you bend in half. And, you know, they're very different movements. We were only doing things that we knew. Like, I would always ask Yasmin, I'd say, hey, I think this is a pretty cool trend because we always wanted to keep our social media going because we had a goal. Uh, but I would always say, uh, you know, but if this is going to hurt your back, we won't do it. So we would make those educated decisions. Exactly. And again, I was old enough to know what is good for me and to know what is good for my body. And I think I made smart decisions and I think the teachers just never understood and it was a really big problem that they never believed me. So yeah, I got that letter from the doctor and I obviously had to um, sit out of ballet for a really, really long mm. time. Then the next year started and um, I slowly got back into it. Still had the same pain. Uh, still, weirdly, no one believed me after I've already oh, showed them how the about, letter. Let's talk about the fact that, so she gets her uh, exam. Uh... Yeah, I got my exam uh, feedback basically. I knew I didn't give 100%. I had a slipped disc, a severe injury. So obviously I didn't give 100%. I just wanted to get it done. And the teacher goes, you know what I mean? I just don't think you gave 100%. And I literally said there looking at her, I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> are you serious? Like, it, I, I still thought got I was a great dreaming. mark. Like, well. I got a pretty good mark. Like it wasn't that bad. It was worse than the marks that I got before, but also, couldn't really care in that moment. But just the fact that she has to say in my face, you didn't really give 100%. Like, I just think you could have given more. I think there was more there that you could have done. 
Mm. I, I didn't even know. I just said that. I didn't even say anything. And I just And the down. thing is, guys, we've touched on like four or five examples in this whole chat. And we have millions. millions. Like, like literally. It would be every day a new comment here, a new comment there. Exactly. So that's all about that injury. So I got into the next year, still had pain. Then I actually went to the doctor again because I started feeling pain in my hip. I've always had hip problems my whole mm -hmm. life. Turned out I have another injury, a <laughs> chronic injury, um, which is a hip dysplasia, which is awful to be a dancer. So that was another thing. And this was already really far into the moment where we were like, kind of considering social, social media. media. Time. Um, so I had to actually take another year off. So I knew I was not going to dance for another full year while mm. James was killing it in class. You were, you always kill it in class. And our thought actually was at that time that because he was a class underneath mm. me, by me having a year off, it would then the next year after put me in the same year as him. Because another thing that always was a scary thought for us was, all right, what if I graduate and now I have to audition for a company? Yep. And even by us being in the same class, it doesn't fix the problem of what if we get into the same, into the same company or not? So this is, this is a very big, big reason also as to why we didn't go the ballet world route. We are deeply in love. And honestly, literally after only a couple weeks of dating, these were conversations we were already having. We knew how real it was and we were already discussing, well, what happens? Can we audition for the same company and get in there together? Can we... Do long distance, is that an option? Uh, you know, and every single time we would have these conversations, it would end in tears. Yeah. And we just and, kind of and knew. And it wasn't resolved, just tears. We didn't know no, an what answer. to do. Like, there was no answer for it. And to be honest, we do know lots of other people that have done it that way, but we just felt like we were so connected that we just couldn't do that. It's not something we could go through. And to be honest, a lot of companies, a lot of directors, don't like couples in their company because if we get into their company and then we break up, then the whole dynamic in that company is horrible. And this is why this decision worked out so much better for us. Mm. So the next point we want to cover is confidence. Now, ever since we left the ballet world, our confidence has definitely skyrocketed. That's not to say that there aren't people in the ballet world that are extremely confident. The thing is with that world is it's constant corrections. So I also come from the hip hop world where this move is also this move and it's also this move. Whereas in ballet, it's not this, it's this. It's very, very specific and you're constantly striving for a perfectionism which that doesn't quite yeah, exist. Sorry, which is beautiful. That's why it looks so gorgeous when you mm. have... 30 ballerinas on stage and their arms are like literally perfect. It's literally beautiful. It's amazing, but it is consuming. And this is the thing. We both have been in these classes every single day, looking at ourselves in the mirror, constantly analyzing ourselves. And then it gets deeper than that. You start analyzing your personality. You start analyzing the way you speak, the way you look, the way you walk. And to be honest, that's not healthy. And it was consuming us and... Wasn't, wasn't good. good. I was going to say, especially in a girl's perspective, but to be fair, it's not just a girl's perspective. Mm. It's also in terms of boys. It's you compare yourself mm. every single That's day, so every single second. And now, and I know everyone always says, don't compare yourself to others. I'm sorry. In the ballet world, you compare yourself you to do. others. Like genuinely every single day, I look at myself in the mirror in my, in my leotard and tights. When like, you're practically I'm, naked. Literally, I can see every single inch of my body and I'm looking over to this other girl who looks in my eyes, in my ballet eyes, so gorgeous. Which it's she's just, probably thinking the same thing about her. Exactly. And it's just, it's just so, so difficult and tricky to love yourself, mm. to look at yourself in the mirror and go, damn, like, it is. It's, wow. That's why actually social media got me so far, like got me through this so easily because I had these people online writing all these comments that you're so talented, you're so beautiful, this is so great and blah, 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 blah. Mm. And I'm not saying that you need comments to make yourself feel better, but, but in that time, it did make me feel much, much better. 100%. And the thing is when you're in a negative space and when you're surrounded by negativity and whether that be your own brain or other people it really consumes you and we could feel ourselves being constantly drained by this 
You know, also just to add on a, a little point here, every day you come to class and everyone's like, oh yeah, here we go, we got variation. Oh, here we go, now we've got this. Draining. Oh, now we've got a tutor. And it just sucks. I hate hearing complaining. I hate hearing all this stuff. I want to be around positive people. I want to be doing stuff. I want to be productive. And the upsetting part is, in that group of people complaining how they're upset and blah, 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 and they don't want to do it and all that, there's still those couple people that freaking love it. But mm. it they pulls get them down. It yep. pulls them down yep. as well. So, you know, it's, I'm not saying that everyone hates it. There's so many people that love it, you know, mm. and I love getting corrections. I'm, it might, I mean, they make us so much better. Also, and it's the way more, we teach. I was going to say, this is how we teach now. We are really precise. If we say it's this, it's not that, it's not this. Mm -hmm. You know, we learn so much from it. Like, this is how we can be such good teachers ourselves. But it does really affect your mental health a lot. Um, and it did affect our mental health Definitely. a lot. And now we're just so much, we feel so much better now. One thing I want to add, and this is the question that everyone asks me, is it like the movies? Now, the thing is, I watched a documentary not that long ago, and it was like a 60 minutes documentary on the Victoria's Secret supermodels. And, you know, what goes along behind the scenes, and, you know, body dysmorphia, anorexia, people not eating properly, people starving themselves. And to be honest, we've seen it. Yeah. You know, we personally didn't really go through that. But we have seen a lot of that, and it is very normalized in the ballet yeah, world. It is. That's why someone like me with a more normal body, and I'm more normal now. I was much, 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 much skinnier. skinnier back then. I would look at myself and think, I'm not skinny enough. And that's crazy. If I look at myself, like photos of myself when I did ballet every single day, I was a skinny mini, like mm. literally stick, you yep. know? And, and I think I just learned to love my body now. I love to work out. This is another thing. I was always scared to work out. Yep. I always thought, I can't work my booty. I, I had, have a booty. I had teachers literally say to me, don't do squats, it'll make your your quads too big. It's or ridiculous. don't run, it'll make your quads too big. Or don't do this. That's not how anatomy works. And, and again, yes, that's not how anatomy works. And we understand that ballet is ballet. Ballet is an aesthetic art form True. and we understand and we also agree with certain things you know we agree with you it has to be aesthetically pleasing on stage but it just sometimes goes a bit way too much into the wrong yep. direction i actually have two experiences so i went on two interns so i went to one company in germany and then i went to another company in germany and i won't name the names of the company but one company i went to with uh, another friend of mine we were pulled aside by the ballet master and we were told that our quads are too big. Now, funnily enough, another friend of mine who went to a different company and a different intern, he was told that his quads weren't big enough. So there are definitely directors that have their preferences and that also makes it really tricky in yeah. the ballet world. And then I also had another experience that was quite confronting actually. I went to a company, I was with one other guy, and we were there and we were in the studio our first day and everyone just got changed in the studio. So I'm seeing gentle tools, I'm seeing girls, you know, anatomy, I'm seeing absolutely everything. And I'm also seeing the director walk in and smack company members on the butt. I'm seeing people being spoken to in not a very nice way. And, you know, this kind of gets us into the whole wage problem and the whole... Uh, essentially the monetization as a dancer not for us it's not nice no. it's not nice it's not good enough for what we want we had conversations of well you know what when we have children we want them to have the best we want to have a beautiful house together we want to have a pool we want to go on vacations we want the finer things of life yeah. and the fact is being a ballet dancer for the next 25 years couldn't give us that. Exactly. And there was this one teacher who came into a class and no one was really motivated on that day. We all didn't work hard enough, obviously. Um, mm. <laughs> which, that happens, to be honest. There's some days where you just don't give 100%. And she walked in and she goes, Guys, you don't dance for the money. You have to dance because you love it. She should never expect money. And I just thought in my head, I can't. Get the point about you have to love what you do to be good at it. 
But I'm sorry, I have goals in my life and everyone has different goals. That's Your guys' exactly. goals maybe are not my goals and my goals are probably not someone else's but goals. I do believe that people should be rewarded for their hard work. Now, don't want to get too deep in this, but I do have a strong opinion on this, right? Getting ready. It's, <laughs> it's tricky with the arts, yeah. right? We, you know, ballet is not a competitive sport. It's not something people can bet on. It's not something that advertisers can slap their brands on a jersey. You know, it is a very tricky thing and they do constantly struggle for funding. Yeah. Is that because there's a new scandal every couple months? Maybe, but we don't have to get into yeah. that. <laughs> the thing is, there is not enough pay for dancers. Yeah. And as we get older and as we build our following, we really want to be big advocates for dancers getting paid better. I'm How can we do that? Well, why couldn't the principal artist of the Marinsky Ballet also be sponsored by Under Armour? Well, this is actually a crazy thing because there's a girl who I've been following for oh, really? a long time. Yeah, um, she's a dancer and she actually does social media and she has like a lot of followers Perfect on social example. media by posting ballet videos and her rehearsal videos and all that stuff. Um, she's sponsored by Nike because in all her videos, she wears Nike. One and this thing is really I would, interesting. One thing I would also say is that's amazing that her company accepts that, but there are plenty of companies they that don't. will not allow, it will and be in their the contract, that they will not uh, be allowed yeah. to earn exactly. other money and work with other brands. Because by us giving these examples of like, people should do this. That's my phone. Uh -oh. <laughs> um, people should do this, people should, like ballet has to evolve and all that stuff. There is companies like Isabella Watson. She's killing it on she social is. media. She's Shut a beautiful up. dancer. Yeah. She's like the soloist of ABT. So she's doing ballet, ballet dancer, professional ballet dancer full time and juggling social media at the same time. But why? Because her company supports it. Mm. She, they, she's allowed to film her rehearsals. She's allowed to do all these things. This company is already a step further than so many other companies. And let me tell you, I 100% next time I'm there want to buy a ticket exactly. just to see her. Yeah, exactly. So it's a different mentality, yeah. but I think the ballet world will get there eventually. 100%. But the timing, it just didn't, didn't work, work for us. us. And I think now it's time to tell you guys the exact story on how and when we left school. Yep. All right, let's go back to the beginning of this year. Yep. I'm pretty sure, I, yeah, I was still injured. I mm -hmm. was not taking classes. You were still full on in training and everything. And we both got COVID. It hit us really, really bad. Uh, because we just got our booster and literally four days after, boom, we had it. So I just think our immune system just wasn't strong enough. Our body just wasn't strong enough to fight it. So it hit us really, really bad. And we actually, first we said we're going to stay a full week at home. Mm -hmm. Then we actually went to the doctor because we were literally out of breath while walking up the stairs. And we actually had a friend that we danced with who literally just had a week's quarantine. And then he went straight back to school, into training, and actually developed a heart condition, and he's only 19. And we were kind of like, well, we don't want that. Exactly. So we went to the doctor, and we got um, a proper checkup, and he went, you guys are not ready. He knew the school we went to, he knew how hard the training is there, and he decided, you guys should not be going there. You should also shouldn't go into school and watch. You should just go home and sleep mm. all day, like literally rest. Rest, rest, rest. It's so important. COVID is really dangerous and you have to take it really serious because you don't want to develop things like a heart condition or breathing issues or lung issues or whatsoever. So yeah, we basically went home. We did our rest. We had our doctor's certificate. And of course, we went back to school and all hell broke loose. You know, no one was happy that we went to a doctor. No one was happy that we took the week off. You know, as we said, the training is hard. It's very strict. And... It wasn't even accepted that we took this time off exactly. for that. Another thing is, while we had COVID, we finally took our time and we're just like, all right, let's check some of our emails. I mean, obviously we always used to check emails, but we just didn't have much time because we used to train from Monday till Saturday, most of the times from like eight to 6.30. And then on Sunday, we would film 14 dance videos. For and the then social media. For the social media and then just post them during the week. So we didn't really focus on social media during the week. It was literally just that one day on the mm. weekend. And then we finally had our time <laughs> while being sick to just, you know, Look think, through our emails. Think, Go talk. through. Yeah. Like and we had so many conversations. How do we feel at the moment? All that stuff. And we realized 
oh my god we're missing out on so many opportunities we would scroll us. through these emails and there would be brands being like hey can you jump on a zoom call at this time can you jump on a zoom call at this time and traditionally we were always saying no to the zoom calls. this is the thing like it's not like in that one week we finally checked our emails no. we've been checking our emails we've been doing brand deals during that time and often we actually had to say no to brand deals because we couldn't do that zoom mm. call because we had school we couldn't do that because of that and also good paid brand deals this was the real light bulb moment where we were like we just went to school we essentially got abused for the fact that we're taking care of our body and we just made a nice chunk of change from being at home the last week what are we still doing here yeah let's take the jump let's take the leap and it was hard <laughs> it's not like it was COVID. we saw those emails and boom let's go it was a lot of talking we obviously had to talk to our parents that have been supporting us this whole time yep. going to school i mean james went to a complete different country my mom has moved cities twice for me to be able to go to a better school and all that stuff my mom supported me my whole my whole career yep. and it was so hard for both of us to tell our parents hey we, we, we don't want to do this anymore and i have told my mom when i had my injury a little bit earlier already that it was already on the cards already on the cards yep. because it didn't look good for me because i was still injured then injured then and yeah, so we had to tell our parents. We had multiple discussions. Well, what's next? Mm. Do we stay here? Do we move to a different country? Do we go there? Do we go with an agency? Like, what's to go? Like, yep. how do we manage this? It, it took think, bravery. Yeah. And one thing, if I could say to all of you guys, if you could take one thing from this chat, it's if you do want to take a jump or you do want to take a leap and you feel like you're stagnant and you're still right now in your life, think of it like this. It's like ripping off a Band-Aid. It hurts in the moment, but then it feels amazing. Exactly. And you know, in that moment, it was like ripping off a Band-Aid. It felt really uncomfortable to be like to all our peers, hey, you know what? We've only got one year left at this course, at this school, before we go into the professional world. We're quitting, we're going all in. Also, just to mention, the thing is with social media, if we fail, we fail publicly. Exactly. We fail publicly. <laughs> yeah. You know, so we're really going we, all in. We really had to believe in ourselves. And also, we don't want to say that degrees and all that stuff is not important. No. It wasn't important to us. There's so many jobs in this world where you do need a degree and it is important to have that piece of paper. Sure. And just for us, it was just like, why? Don't genuinely also, don't even, it's, but even in the, the dance arts. world, not even in the dance world, like there's dancers that come from private schooling, they don't have a piece of paper, no. but they're a soloist in the end because they're phenomenal. Because they're phenomenal, you know? And <laughs> phenomenal <laughs> doesn't matter. And um yeah, just wanna get out there that still if you wanna be a doctor, get that piece of <laughs> yeah. paper, okay? Yeah. Don't say I wanna be a doctor, so I'm gonna do it my own way. Like, drop it you, know, out. <laughs> you have to you have to be smart. <laughs> And um, we definitely support people that get their degrees and that go that route. Mm. And we also support people that take a risk. I mean, both are risky. Anything you do in life Anything is risky. That's a funny thing. You know, when I had the meeting with the oh, director yeah. at the last moment, you know, the director saying to me, oh, you know, social media, that's a big risk. And I just thought to myself but afterwards. You know how, no, wait. You know, he said, you know, what do you do when you're 30, 40? Like, what can you do? The funny thing is, you, you're not going to be a dancer for longer than... 30, exactly, 40. it's the same thing. It's just as much of a risk to do ballet. I know so many people that have done a two-year career and blown a knee out, or a two-year career, and, I mean, look at your look injuries. Look at me! You know, and that was a... Yeah, I mean, it's all coming together <laughs> yeah, exactly. now. There's so many reasons. Um, yeah, so basically, we've had all this conversation. We obviously talked about all this that we're talking to you guys about, just the two of us. Told our parents, our parents... That, decided to be really supportive. Yep, We're really, lucky. really lucky because I know it is hard sometimes with your parents and thank God we have parents that are really supportive yes. and they understood and they listened. We made a decision. We let our school know that we are going to leave which was also really difficult yes. but felt amazing in the end of the day like yes. the relief we both felt when we put in that piece of paper of we're leaving oh so good <laughs> and I think then we actually went on a cruise we did, which <laughs> we, we actually booked. The, it was already booked way earlier, so we went on that cruise, which was absolutely beautiful because just... Symbolic the, moment of being yeah, like, Yeah, it was freedom. like, freedom! <laughs> um, <laughs> and that's also 
where we already started to thinking to think about doing YouTube and all that stuff because we yep. didn't do that back then. And then we had like I think one and a half more months to get rid of our apartment, sell all our stuff, and book move, tickets and move to Australia. Move to Australia. And now we're here. We're here. We're doing yeah. it. We're here. We're happy. We're proud of what mm. we're doing. We're still struggling. We still have days where we doubt ourselves, obviously. Yes. I mean, everyone does that. But we're really happy with our decision. And um, we're so happy we can share it with you guys. Yeah. And we really just hope you guys can join us on our journey and follow us and see where this path takes us. Exactly. I think that's the video. That's pretty much it. <laughs> we love you guys so, so much. We really appreciate the support. And obviously, we could have never made this step without all of you. Exactly. You guys are the reason why we're here, why we are where we are. Mm. And yeah, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Wow. Thank you love guys. Love you guys. Great chat. Mwah. Subscribe. <laughs>